So where'd you go after Lincoln? Mexico. Until I realized nobody was looking for me. I ended up taking a job at the Rurales. The Mexican Rurales? I was hired to help them track down the Cowboys. The most vicious outlaw gang in Cochise County? Curly Bill Brocious, Johnny Ringo? Led by old man Clan himself. They must have paid you a pretty penny to take them on Brazon. Not really. But truth be told, I had my own reasons for going after those boys. So was the bastard you were after now, riding with the cowboys? Roscoe Bob Bryant was his name. Oh. But no, this time it was a different bastard I was after. The aforementioned Mr. Ringo. And yes, he was working for old man Clanton. I hate fucking running. I came upon them robbing a stagecoach, which wasn't surprising being they were such murderous thieves and bastards. The bandits wore red scarves, so I knew they worked for the old man. Over there! There! I did my best to help those poor passengers. Moments later, the attackers were dead, and I checked the stagecoach to see how many passengers were still breathing. None. It was then I wondered if the rocks weren't hiding more bandits. Was that all of them, or did I just hit the rear guard? I quickly got my answer. They attack from on high like Apaches often do. They would appear in great numbers from above and rain down lead on their helpless enemies' heads. Making use of the high ground and whatever else they have. Yep, the Apaches always appeared out of nowhere. And there never seemed to be an end to it. What happened to the cowboys? Did I say they were Apaches? I said Clanton's cowboys attacked me Apache style. I was in a pitched battle, but I was holding my own against an overwhelming enemy force. Where's he going? See, at the time, I was still pretty green, but often blunder into regrettable situations. But I just kept shooting at anything I could see up in those damn rocks. <clears throat> I didn't see Ringo, but I knew he was with the Cowboys. <clears throat> he and Roscoe Bob had done me a dreadful wrong, and I was determined to have my revenge. <clears throat> but to get to Ringo, I knew I'd have to fight my way past these other assholes first.
Unfortunately, I was running out of ammo. Another perfect example of my relative inexperience as a hunter of men. I immediately knew that a tactical retreat was called for, as my vengeful fury was much less impressive without the bullets to back it up. Finally, they managed to corner me. Trapped as I was, the odds of my survival seemed pretty slim. Luckily, serendipity was on my side as I suddenly spotted a way out of my predicament. as if the devil himself was after me. Bullets were whizzing by my ears, but I wasn't about to roll over and die. I just kept running like there was no tomorrow. Because there wouldn't be if Clanton and his men caught up with me. As I was scurrying around those caves, I thought, what was I thinking, going up against a gang like this? They were hunting me like I was dead. And I swear to God, that's how I felt. I just kept running, not knowing where the hell I was going. No one would ever find you here! And that's when something miraculous happened. Like mana from heaven. I found the desiccated remains of what looked like an Apache warrior. The old weapon next to him supplied me with some much-needed ammunition. Bat Masterson once told me it was more important to be lucky than good, and he would know. And imagine my surprise when I found a fistful of dynamite to go along with that ammo. That stroke of good fortune evened the odds and bolstered my confidence. It was time to turn the tables. Time for the prey to become the predator. Time for the hunted to become the hunter. Time. All right, Jesus, we get it. They were right where you wanted them. That's right, Jack. I was done running. And the old man's boys were not expecting that. No, sir. I came at them like a wildcat. My fury knew no bounds. It was finally time for that old man to pay for his sins. I 
I yelled out at the top of my lungs. Clanton, I'm coming for you! A little stealth might have made more sense, to be perfectly honest. Because that old fool had a Gatlin gun and enough bullets to last him till King was done. But I knew I could not let that deter me. Not if I was to find and kill Ringo. I needed to get that old man off that gun. Everyone thought it was the Ruales who had come up against him in Guadalupe Canyon, but it was just me. Reload again! Uh, uh. 
Cowboys made it out of there alive and told Ike and Billy Clanton that it wasn't a Mexican who took their father's life that day. They just assumed it was one of the Earps, and that little misunderstanding eventually led to that legendary gunfight at the Old K Corral. A few weeks after that dust-up at the OK Corral, I was still after Johnny Ringo. I had tracked him and the cowboys to their hideout at a sawmill, and they were loaded for bear. So, what exactly did Johnny Ringo do to piss you off? Well, him and that other bastard. Roscoe Bob Bright? Yep. They both deserve to die, and I promise I'll tell you why. But first I need to tell you about the cowboy's new boss, Curly Bill Brocious. Herb's coming! Get ready, boys.
Curly Bill took charge of the Cowboys upon the old man's demise. And after that gunfight at the OK Corral, the Clantons wanted revenge. So they murdered Morgan Earp and grievously wounded his older brother, Virgil. Wyatt and Doc went on what became known as the Vendetta Ride, hunting those outlaws down. So when I showed up, that's who they thought I was. Killers around every corner, all wearing red bandanas. That's how the cowboys identified each other, and I was beginning to wish I had one myself.
I wasn't about to let Ringo walk away unscathed. And that's what drove me forward. They say that Ringo was infernally fast. I hardly saw anyone faster, boy. Certainly not Wyatt Earp. That man was all hat and no cap. Herb was much of a match for him, but Doc Holliday might have taken him. That Lunger should have kept his nose out of it. They never charged anyone for the murder of Morgan Earp. But everybody knew that Curly shot him in the back. That was common knowledge. Well, maybe so. But Ringo had nothing to do with it. He was just being loyal to a friend. Is that what you call it? Being loyal. Well, to get to that loyal friend, I had to pass by some buzz saws as big as a man. Sir, I have a question. What's that, Dwight? After old man Clanton died, why didn't his son take over the Cowboys? Because Ike Clanton was dumber than a box of rocks and a yellow belly to boot. Where was I? Taking down the entire cowboy gang single-handed. Indeed I was, Jack. It wasn't easy as those boys had good cover.
everywhere, piles of lumber, and God knows what else for people to hide behind. That really was one hell of a sawmill. Quite an impressive operation. Where was Curly Bill? Did you see him? I'm about to get to that, Ben. Patience. I'm painting a picture here. There was this beautiful waterfall and a crystal clear stream that led to a verdant valley that was truly... Consider your picture painted. What happened next? Well, finally the bastards that were still alive made a last stand. Curly Bill, Johnny Ringo, and his compadres took off into the lumber yard, and I followed after.
Are you saying they ran? Cowardice was not in Ringo nor Curly Bill's nature. No, sir. I never said they were running scared. They just wanted me out in the open. Time to dance with the devil! You cannot do it, you quiet herb. Did that son of a bitch herb send you to kill me? You can't hide forever, boy. just gave me no choice but to take his life. But Ringo was nowhere to be found. I knew you didn't kill Ringo, because he was found dead in a different location altogether. To this day, his killer is still unknown. Indeed. It took me a few months before I finally tracked his ass to West Turkey Creek Canyon. Sir, I always thought that Doc Holliday was the one that killed him.
Sorry I had to ruin the legend for you, boy. But the legend ain't always true. Doc Holliday had nothing to do with the death of Johnny Ringo. 